one. That's an order, Marine! I can't breathe! Jimmy! Jimmy! Great movie. I remember growing up to that. Welcome. My name is Hazard. I'm a fighter pilot for the Air Force. I spent the first half of my career flying the F-16, and now I fly the F-35. Before we get started, I'm going to be giving away my patch that I fly with. So in order to win this, make sure to subscribe. Turn on notifications. I'll be releasing a video soon on how to win it. So this is a great question. What happens if you take off your mask at altitude? So let's talk about the mask first. So the mask is designed to prevent you from getting hypoxic. So that's lack of oxygen to the brain, but also has a microphone in there so that you can communicate with the outside world. It also, some masks have a lip light. So I was flying in Afghanistan with a lip light where if you uh, push a button with your tongue, it'll turn on the light, which is surprisingly useful when you're flying at night, when you're doing cast, close air support, communicating with the, the guys on the ground, they're calling in airstrikes. You're having to write down a lot of information and a lip light is helpful. It frees up uh, one of your hands. So the primary job is to prevent you from getting hypoxic. So hypoxic is lack of oxygen to the brain. And as you feel your symptoms, go ahead and let us know what they are. Six of spades. I feel really good right now. Six of spades. No, uh, no symptoms yet. Two of hearts. Two of hearts. Four of spades. What is that to? Four of, sp <laughs> Four of spades. Four of spades. You sure? Where's that code to? What is it? What are you feeling right now at number 14? Five of spades. Five of spades. What are you feeling, sir? Four of spades. Four of spades. What is it? What's your symptom, sir? What are you feeling, number 14? Four of Four of spades, four of spades. And so if you lose enough oxygen to the brain, you're gonna pass out, which is obviously not good in a single seat fighter like the F-16 or the F-35. So we do a lot of training to recognize our hypoxia symptoms before it gets that bad. So for me, my fingers start to tingle. I start to get uh, lightheaded. And then if it gets bad enough, I start seeing some uh, flashes of light on my peripheral vision. So anytime that happens, each jet is going to have a emergency procedure. So in the F-35, we activate the BOSS backup oxygen system. In the F-16, you gang load your regulator so that you're getting 100% oxygen. And uh, hopefully those hypoxia symptoms go away as you're descending to a lower altitude. Now, the typical concentration for the oxygen that we're breathing is going to be uh, what it is right now. So about 20% uh, oxygen and then about 80% nitrogen. Now you can increase that. So in the F-16, I flew a couple models that had uh, LOX, so liquid oxygen. So that's what's been used the majority of aviation. It's simple, it's effective. You can get up to 100% oxygen. It's cooling oxygen down uh, so that it gets into a liquid state. So it's extremely cold. It requires a lot of support equipment, which is why we've been moving away from that to OBOX, onboard oxygen generation system. So we had that in some of the more advanced F-16s as well as the F-35. The upside is that you don't need all that support equipment. So you can reduce your maintenance footprint. And also you can go to other bases that don't have that uh, support equipment and still have your oxygen. Downside is that it's very complicated. If it fails, it's hard to understand how it's failing. We've had some issues over the years. We're still working on perfecting it. Also, it doesn't quite get to 100% oxygen concentration. You can get to the uh, low 90s generally. Now, with modern fighters, the oxygen system provides positive pressure as you increase in altitude, which is good. So pressure is not as high at high altitude, so you have to labor your breathing to get as much oxygen as you are at sea level. So what it does is it uh, forces air into your lungs as you increase in altitude, so it reduces the fatigue of having to labor your breathing. Where this really helps though is with G's. So as we increase in G's, it starts forcing air into your lungs. I remember flying in the T-38, this was about uh, 10, 12 years ago, and the T-38 is an old aircraft. So it was built in the 50s. It doesn't have this positive pressure breathing, at least at the time. And so I remember we were flying offensive BFM, so that's dog fighting. We were doing a rate fight where we were sustaining a high amount of G's for a long amount of time. 
at least at the time it felt like that. T38 really doesn't pull that many Gs, but afterwards I remember being wiped, I was out of breath, and the instructor, you know, after freezing the tapes was like, why, why are you breathing so hard? You need to be in better shape. I know you don't have a lot of experience, but there's no excuse to not be in great shape. So I got in good shape after that. But in the F-16, F-35, still important to be in good shape, but we have positive pressure. So as the Gs increase, you can just take a, a small sip of air and it fills your lungs with oxygen. All right, let's talk about the pressure schedule of these jets. So it's a little bit different than an airliner. And the reason is we wanna save weight. And so our systems are a little bit simpler and they don't pressurize quite as much as an airliner. So from zero to 8,000 feet, it's just gonna maintain whatever the outside air pressure is. So it's not gonna do a whole lot. From 8,000 feet up to about 20, 25,000 feet, it's gonna maintain 8,000 feet in the cockpit. So as you get above that, it's gonna maintain what's called a pressure delta. So it's gonna gradually increase. So if you're at 30,000 feet, you can expect the cabin air pressure to probably be around 12,000 feet. If you're flying at 40,000 feet, it's probably gonna be around 15,000 feet. And then at 50,000 feet, it's probably gonna be high teens, maybe 20,000 feet in the cockpit. So it's important to keep the mask on. If you have a decompression at those altitudes, then you're gonna black out within just a few seconds if you don't have your mask on. Now, if you have a rapid decompression, then you're probably gonna get altitude sickness. So the bends where the gases in your blood come out of solution and it causes a whole bunch of problems. But that's generally why the uh, service ceiling for most aircraft is 50,000 feet, not because the aircraft can't go above it, but because if you don't have a pressure suit on, bad things start to happen. So what happens if pilots drop their masks? The answer is, if it's just a short amount of time, nothing's gonna happen. We do it quite often when we're taking drinks of water, but you better put the mask back on, especially if you're flying at high altitude. Otherwise, you can get some of those hypoxia symptoms. And because the cockpit is pressurized, it's not gonna be an immediate effect. It's gonna be gradual over time. It's gonna be insidious, which can actually be worse. So unless I'm uh, drinking water or, or eating a snack, I have the mask on, but uh, taking off for a brief amount of time isn't gonna kill you. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, gonna be giving away my patch. So make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll be releasing a video soon on how to win it. I'll talk to you next time.